In this video, I'll cover the basics of the Tasty Chance S main skill. At present time, the Denai is the only Pokemon with this main skill, and for the most part, this is a complicated one to puzzle out. So in this video, I want to cover the basics and also go over some of the interesting strategies that you can use with this main skill. The overall effect of the main skill is each time it triggers, it will stack a percentage chance uh, to get an extra tasty meal. Depending on the time of day, or not even time of day, but uh, time of week, you will have a different multiplier on the extra tasty dishes. So Monday through Saturday, it's gonna be a 2x multiplier. So if it's tasty, it's just gonna be twice the, the Snorlax strength. And then on Sundays, it is three times. Depending on the event that is ongoing, there may be even bigger effects on the extra tasty, like we saw in February with the Valentine's event. And so that could be pretty interesting. There it was a 1.5 multiplier. So Monday through Saturday was three times and Sunday extra tasty was 4.5. And so the Dedenne at times can really pull in a lot of work. So every time it triggers at level one, it will increase the extra tasty uh, chance by 4%. And that will display in the cooking um, screen. And it is separate to the Sunday extra tasty boost. So the boosts from the main skills cap out at 70%. And then on Sundays in general, you just get a 20% boost. So in total, you can have a 90% chance to extra tasty. And that is a huge combo uh, strategy potential because if you consider the cooking pot video that I put out on just the Magnezone, Flareon, and Glaceon, if you make an early lunch on Friday, stop cooking, then you don't do dinner on Friday, you don't cook at all on Saturday, then what you can do is you can run one or two Pokemon with a cooking pot up, and then you can run two to three Dedenne, just that level one main skill on the Dedenne, and start stacking up this um, extra tasty until you reach the 70 cap, and then you just call it a day and switch back in your berry Pokemon or ingredient Pokemon or, or some other skill specialists. And particularly during events where cooking is a big deal, for example, during the Valentine's event, then can you imagine the 4.5x multiplier on the extra tasty? And then if you stack your cooking power of Pokemon up to an additional 200 in the cooking pot size, so not only do you have the base pot size, you have the Sunday bonus, which is double pot size, and then you have a good camp ticket potentially, and then the 200 max extra from the main skill cooking pot, like you're talking like 450 potentially in that cooking pot at that point. And if you have a 90% chance to crit the meal with a 4.5 multiplier, like we're talking like all, almost a million in cooking and it's just like one dish. And possibly if you have some really cracked the Dene as well to where you can actually run the Dene more um, effectively just throughout the Sunday too. And throughout the Sunday, you can also run these uh, cooking pot Pokemon, then you're just gonna have a really good strategy, especially if you consider the Sunday. If you cook a super early breakfast, you have all the way until almost 6 p.m. to cook the lunch. So you have almost 12 hours awake, energized, popping. And so if you, if you by some chance don't get that 10%, uh, like if you do get the 10% where you don't get crit, the extra tasty chance is kept until you either uh, cook an extra tasty dish, which is the goal, or if you change campsites. So unfortunately, you can't stack the extra tasty uh, into a new week like you can with a cooking pot size. Uh, that is unfortunate because then if you go through breakfast, lunch, and dinner and you don't have an extra tasty, then that's going to suck for you because you spent all that time uh, running the Dene to really rack up that extra tasty and it did nothing and it just resets. 
So the point there is you have a ridiculous 90% uh, max chance of the extra tasty at like 7 a.m. on the Sunday. Then you have 11 hours almost to work on that lunch. And at that point, you're going to be pretty set. And the big point here with the Dene, which is why I'm putting out this video now before I go into like some advanced guide, because the advanced the Dene guide is going to be so full of numbers and just anxiety for uh, newer and, and mid like players that I need to split it up. What you can do with the Dene, which I think is interesting, is even the main skill level one is strong on the Dene, which means how many procs is that? I need to do that math like real quick because that is an important one. Let's see, we just do 70 and we divide it by four. We get, is that 17? I can't see. Let's see, just using the spreadsheet here, calculator, 17 and a half. That makes a lot of sense. So if you run three to Dene, then you need each one of those to pop six times for this to be uh, maxed out. And if you consider the right after lunch on Friday into the morning of Sunday, you for sure are gonna get those uh, six skill procs with this skill rate on each of them. So for me personally, I'm gonna be looking at four to Dene. I want the main skill chance up nature and then a single skill trigger M. Potentially also some helping speed would be nice. And for the most part, if I can score somehow the skill level up M, that could be pretty strong. I can put it into the calculator here. Uh, we got the, uh, not the mild, uh, let's just use careful. That one's a solid one. If I can get something like this, I'm gonna be happy. If I find something like this, it's beyond amazing. And then back to the whole point of the main skill here, for the most part, when it comes to main skill Pokemon, you want to really dump the seeds into it. But I'm thinking you're losing out on a little bit of optimized gameplay in terms of you could be having one busted Dedene and three berry Pokemon as well as your healer. But why not run like four decent Dedene and just wait for that cap to happen? And then switch back your berry Pokemon and save your seeds for the skill specialists that really matter. So long, long, long term, having one or two like busted tasty chance Pokemon could be super, super strong. But in the short term, I think just having three to four Dedene at level one is going to do just fine. If you really want to go for that insane combo on the breakfast Sunday. So... I think for the most part, we will be looking for another tasty chance Pokemon in the future so that you can overall go on that long-term hunt for that one Dedene you can dump seven seeds into or what it is at that point. Uh, but for the most part, I think Dedene, it caps out as a skill specialist at level one main skill at level 25. So for the most part, you just need to catch it, level it up to level 25 and maybe consider some uh, sub-skill seeds if you're lucky with the nature and the placement of these. But yeah, the Dedene, a very interesting Pokemon. I will be coming back with an advanced guide at some point for the Dedene, where we look at what the actual value is uh, of the Tasty Chance S, because you can calculate that. Particularly if you run the Dedene from Monday and onwards in a week, and what you can then do is you can look at your average meal. And that's what we're going to be doing in the advanced guide coming later. We will look at a couple meals or dishes and consider their average cooking value. And then what this tasty chance does is the 4% is 8% value per trigger of that average meal, which means in numbers, for example, if the average meal that you cook is 30,000 uh, Snorlax strength, on Monday through Saturday, the extra tasty of that, looking away from the area bonus and, uh, you know, 
the percentage boost from the dish itself and, and all those numbers, it, it gets complicated, but we have 30,000 strength, that makes it 60,000, then 8% of 60,000 is gonna be the value of that tasty chance. So, and that's at level one. Um, so, I don't even know if that's right though, 4% chance. Yeah, it must be 8% because, or 4%, it's 8%, 4%. It gets complicated. I have to draw it out to really uh, consider this, but let's say just, let's say 4% and then 5% for easy math. Then essentially each trigger is worth, um, yeah, what's that? 3000 Snorlax strength. And that's not too strong overall. So really for the Dedenne to really work, you probably want the 10% and you just throughout the week want to do it like that if you want to run to Dene on your team and at that point you probably also want like a berry finding here instead like that and then you have the skill trigger m and maybe the helping speed here or maybe even the skill trigger s it gets complicated quickly so you can calculate it uh, you have to like have a bunch of factors and just multiply it together and then you can find the value of it. Possibly it's not going to be as strong as, for example, the Ampharos and Espeon when it comes to just raw numbers and math, but you do have those added um, multiplications that I've covered in this video, which was the possible uh, benefit of, of splitting these two like guides where we have the main skill analysis and the advanced math guide to where the Dene has a use case. It is incredibly strong during those particular examples where you're looking for the extra tasty stacking for the Sunday if Sunday is a big day. So for example, maybe July 21st, which is a good sleep day event that has the full moon Sunday into Monday, the Dene is gonna be a good deal. So be on the hunt for the Dene. Um, it's not overall a super, super important Pokemon, but if you find it hungry, give it biscuits. It is well worth it. So hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any input and leave a like if you did. Ooh, got really good at this one. Subscribe for more Pokemon sleep content. Thank you for watching.